What's up, everybody? This is Donnie Stern, DCScrack.com, bringing you another six max no limit video this week. Um, so let's get into it right away. Top right, I call the three bet, call the flop bet. This is a spot I'd say I, uh, I'm pretty mixed in my strategy here of when to bet the turn and when to check the turn. Um, obviously, I'm going to represent a little bit of a stronger range uh, when I bet the turn. Um, but then again, when I check the turn, uh, I'm talking about this hand on the top right, where when three bet, I call pre, call the flop, and then check back the turn. Um, when I when I uh, check back the turn, it allows me also to represent some cards, such as this one, such as a heart on the river. Um, and I want to bet an amount that pretty confidently gets him to fold stuff like 10x, uh, pocket jacks, pocket queens, pocket kings. I don't want him to, you know, if I bet like one one fifth pot there, sometimes he's just gonna he's just gonna make a crying call um, with something in that range. This is just in case anyone wants to do board again. Uh, so then, you know, you might ask, well, what determines when you bet the, when you bet the turn or check the turn there? Um, I definitely think you, a mixed strategy is good there, and sometimes betting and sometimes checking is good um, with my hand specifically. Um, but in general, I favored checking my hand um, because it had a little bit of showdown value. Uh, and to, to be honest, I'm not even sure if that's a valid point because it's not like I'm getting to showdown that, that often. You know, chances are on a brick river, I'm still going to bet to try to get him to at least fold. You know, random little pocket pairs, things like that. So I got four bet here with queens. Definitely a spot I could get it all in pre. Uh, I don't necessarily have to though. Uh, I mean, part of me thinks I'm in position and I want to have some strategy where I'm calling four bets here with uh, not a wide range, obviously, but a reasonable range. And it's a type of spot because it's under the gun versus button. I don't expect him to have too many um, worse pocket pairs value I expect him probably to just flat pre with tens to my three bet um, I also expect him uh, to well, that's obviously one of the worst turn cards in the deck possible um, but because basically I think he has tons of stuff like tens um, in his flatting range top nines and tens uh, I don't think uh, I'm necessarily gonna be up against that all that often so it makes it a little bit worse to get in against but my range my hand plays that much better against his range if I flat uh, so that's why I, I flat it. I'm going to check back on a king turn. I don't really see much point in betting. Uh, betting would be okay against, you know, if I knew he had jacks or something like that. Um, but even against jacks, it's hard to get two streets more from... I guess I only have a pot size bet left, so... Maybe I should have just jammed the flop. I didn't jam the flop because it's such a... a non-draw heavy board. Uh, I'm going to check on the bottom right of my king jack after three betting pre. I definitely can bet that flop. Uh, I'm going to call on the top left. Um, if he has ace-king, so be it. Uh, King-queen. Uh, it, it is unfortunate when I let him sort of just realize his equity when he has king queen and I have pocket queen. But then again, you know, he had a very terrible equity and I kept him in the pot. Um, and he happened to have hit uh, the king, so it's easy to be results oriented and think maybe I did something wrong to let him win that pot. Uh, but I do think that, you know, obviously if I jam pre, he just folds. Um, he's turning his hand into a bluff by playing it that way. Um, and then. You know, on the one hand, that that does the fact that he has something like king queen. I mean, obviously, I don't expect him to have you know, like six eight suited there. So for the most part, hands that he has that even if they're bluffing, will still have reasonable equity against against my hand. So he's usually going to you know, have like suited ace, like ace nine suited or something, uh, or king queen something like that, where he'll actually have some outs. Um, so because of that, uh, it might justify getting an another raise pre-flop with my hand. Obviously, like I said, I decided to call that time. I certainly would five bet a lot also. I'm pretty much leaning towards a call on the bottom right. This is a spot where I sometimes just convince myself to call because I have a king. It seems like a spot where I can just fold a queen Call with a king, maybe, but then again, it's not like he's betting uh, a naked king for value very often. Mm, I'm gonna fold. That might have been a terrible fold. I wish I had more time. Bank. It's sometimes hard to 
talk about the hand that I'm thinking very hardly about while also making a video. Um, I mean, game theory wise, I certainly shouldn't be folding King Jack there, but I don't necessarily think people bluff in that spot often enough, so it might be okay. Um, I'd say I usually call there, and I probably would have called in the moment, but I was running out of time. Certainly would not be much of a plus EV call, it'd be like ridiculously close. Um, we can talk about that hand in a bit if you guys want. Um, top right, I think this is just a fold, honestly. Pocket threes with you know some regulars behind, um, no soft players behind. The opener is pretty good. Uh, I've played with him a decent amount. I'm going to four bet against the same player in the bottom left. Maze three suited. Uh, certainly not a mandatory spot. Um, but if my hand was much better, I'd be calling. Uh, if my hand was much worse, I would just always fold. Um, he has reasonable three bet numbers, but in truth, maybe he doesn't three bet that much against me in this spot. So maybe I should just fold. I don't. I don't know. Um, Folded ace ten in the top left, not intentionally. Uh, honestly, when I'm under the gun, ace ten off is pretty much, for the most part, I usually just look at the button stats and see how aggro he is, and if he's aggro, I don't open. If he's tight or fishy, I, I open, and then obviously, if it's close, I just look at the other players on the table. If there's like some mass, obviously, if the button's good, but all the other players on the table are massive fish, I'll open. Um, that doesn't happen too often, though, obviously. Uh, so this is the hand I was talking about earlier, the hand that I folded the river, probably a mistake. Um, actually, this table's a little more time bank. Um, now, what I, the point I was making is that a lot of time, if I decide to three bet and then check call a flop and then check call a turn, check the river and the guy goes all in, you know, a lot of time in that spot, I'll have something like a mix of top pair with, with maybe not the best kicker or a second pair or something like that. And I usually think that overall as a balance, you know, calling when you have top pair and folding when you have second pair works out pretty well. Um, obviously, I'm not saying that I would never call with second pair or I would never fold top pair. I would certainly do both depending on the player. Um, I didn't mean to min race on top right. I'm, just like, um, I'm calling a position here with king eight off, even though the guy is very near the stats. Um, when somebody two and a half X's though in the small blind, I think you should be playing re ridiculously, ridiculously loose in the big. Uh, even if they have like a, a range that isn't that loose, it's just you can still call with tons of hands probably. Um, but I'm gonna fold that flop. Okay. Pretty confident about that. Um, so anyway, I was saying a lot of time in those situations, you know, if I balance by calling top pair, folding second pair as a, as sort of like a, at least a default strategy, something that I'll certainly deviate from greatly based on my reads on, on my opponent. But if that's something of a default strategy, I think that works out pretty well. Um, I want to check my pocket sevens in the bottom middle. I thought about betting. Um, since flop got checked through, it seems like a really good chance that neither of them has an ace. Um, and my hand is somewhat vulnerable to pretty much any overcard on the turn that they may check. But I also think if I check, sometimes somebody might just bluff with, with enough. I mean, obviously when he makes the overbet, I, I think I just have to fold. Uh, I am certainly suspicious. It seems kind of strange. Like, he, what can he really have? But um, even though I'm suspicious, he's just not giving me a very good price with the massive bet that I don't think I can call really over here in sevens. Um, so anyway, back to the other hand, this hand. Um, so like I said, in a lot of spots, I'll use that as a balance. But I don't think that was particularly relevant in this spot because it's not as if... Uh, you know, he's jamming like king nine suited for value or something, and me having uh, king jack makes my hand that much better than having, uh, you know, a queen jack or something. Because he's certainly only jamming, you know, 10x, uh, ace jack, king queen, um, stuff like that, really. Uh, I'm betting my. Ace King of Spades in the top right after four betting. Not the best flop for my hand, but against the guy who, I mean, it's, I can't fold uh, to the min raise. Certainly not in the backdoor flush draw. And the fact that an Ace or King is probably good and I can get his stack if he had something worse. Um, like if he has, for example, uh, pocket queens or something. Or I'm just going to fold now, obviously. All right, eight turn.
I thought about maybe making only two tables for this video since the four table can get a little bit frantic, frantic or hectic, I went with frantic. Um, 10 seven off is an open in most situations on the button, certainly with a guy who's playing pretty nitty in the big blind and a guy who I've never seen before in the small. Uh, I see bet this flop, certainly not a mandatory C bet. Uh, I would usually just give up on an offsuit king turn. There's certain turn cards, obviously, are barrel, and, and I don't think the king is, is one of them. I'm going to check call ace jack in the top left. Um, well, he bet very big and very quick, so I'm starting to doubt that I'm going to check call. Now I think I'm thinking about check folding. Mm, I don't know. It seems unlikely that he would just bomb it with a pocket eights. Plan was to check call. I'm going to check call and see what he does on the turn. Um, basically, the reason I check call and I don't see that is I just don't really ever expect him to fold a pair. And it's not. And there's a lot of spots where I don't expect my, phone to ever, my opponent to ever fold a pair, but I'll still bet with ace high because I think I could set myself up for a lot of profitable turn bluffs. I don't do that with ace jack on two, three, six because I don't expect there to be tons of boards I can barrel with my hand on. Um, if the board is different, you know, say it comes queen 10 deuce or something, yeah, I guess I expect them to fold pocket pairs, but it's not like I expect them to fold, um, you know, anything reasonable that hits the board, but I still obviously always would see that with ace jack off because I'm setting myself up for turn river bluffs. Uh, so even even if the, in, even, even in that example, he didn't fold, um, you know, uh, 10 jack or something, I expect that I can get him to fold it later on in the hand. I have a friend visiting. He has a yappy dog He's yapping. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, I'm going to 3-bet my ace 10 suited here. You know what, actually? I'm going to call my ace 10 suited. I've been working on trying to call more hands in the small blind versus min raises. Actually, I think it's not that hard to balance and create a really reasonable range for fighting in the small blind uh, versus min raises from the button. Well, I'm going to 3-bet this, though, the jack nine suited versus a high jack raise. Um, you know, ace 10 suited feels like a good hand to do it with. It's certainly, I'm missing a little bit of value by not 3-betting in that I pretty much just crush his range. For opening the button with ace 10 suited but at the same time i like to keep some of his hands that play really badly against my hand in his range when i flat pre you know he's opening with ace three offsuit right well obviously ace three offsuit you know, but ace three offsuit or something like that if i three bet he's just gonna fold or he might four bet um but I like to keep that in his range, you know, so stuff like 10-7 offsuit, I three bet he just folds. If I flat, I get to play flop, or sometimes, you know, I can create a, a, a bad reverse implied odds situation for him. Uh, so far, the way this hand has played out, I think it's pretty much a no-brainer check call on the flop, and same thing on the turn. And I do think uh, my hand is a little bit transparent, which I don't like. I think I look like I have exactly this type of ace a lot. Um, and so one of my problems with trying to balance uh, my small blind flatting range is that I feel obligated that maybe I, sh I have to flat some sometimes with, you know, big hands, but not like, I don't know. I don't think I ever really have to flat with, you know, aces or kings or ace king, but maybe I do because in that situation, you know, my range is sort of, even like the, the, the most mediocre of opponents can kind of figure out what I could have in that situation. Um, and that when I call the flop, I have a lot of pocket pairs and ace-x. When I call the turn, it pretty much eliminates the pocket pairs and I have just tons of ace-x. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not thrilled about that. Um, but I also feel like there's some hands that I want to call with pre-flop. And I don't necessarily like uh, having 
just like an only three betting range pre in that spot. Um, six seven suited in the hijack is probably a very marginal fold. Seven eight suited, I probably raised. Not really. I mean, both the people behind me were on the nitty side, but not. You know, they were nittier regs, but they were still regs who threw about a decent amount. Um, I mean, it, it's important to differentiate between, you know, having nitty players behind you who are like, you know, nitty regs who are good but tend to play on the tighter side versus having guys who, I won't name any names, but, you know, they basically play Zoom in a very, well, they basically try to just play as many hands as possible is what I should say. And they, they fast fold in a lot of situations where they shouldn't. Folded King Nine off in the small blind versus button open. I'm not sure about that, considering I would probably never fold King Ten off. Um, and it's one of the spots where you know, just equity wise, I have like a reasonable hand versus range. But in terms of you know, playability of my hand, King Nine off is just not going to get me into that many great situations. Jack Nine off, I'm opening from the cutoff. This is probably as marginal as it gets. Jack Ten off, I'd probably open. Jack Nine off with a competent button and all pretty much competent players behind. Not in the best spot. And I'm sure as you guys have noticed, the player pool right now does not look very soft. There's pretty much just all rags playing right now. There's like a couple of soft players in there, which is kind of strange for the time right now. It's like kind of late at night, at least for Euros, it's late at night. I have found for the most part, um, my when I've played it this time, it seems like it's been better, but right now it's shit. So maybe, that's, maybe that was just a unique experience. Um, right now it's not very soft and to be honest, if I wasn't making a video right now, I'd probably be playing some PLO, but I do try to play a good amount of no limit still. Mm. We're going to make maybe a fishy call with deuces here. My opponent only raised two and a half X. Um, that's why I called. If he opened three X, I would just fold. Um, I'm going to check the pocket eights on the top left. I considered leading, but it doesn't make much sense. I don't think to uh, lead. Leading here is okay. It kind of looks like I can, I can have like seven, nine of diamonds or something like that, or spades. Um, some hand like that. I'm going to check raise in a spot that I think check calling is definitely an option. Um, I'll get to it in a second. I like betting again with my pocket eights. Um, it's pretty thin considering that, you know, he, he shouldn't continue with too many one pair hands, but he does always continue when he has like King X with a spade, um, which I don't know how many, he, how, how often he has, you know, King X with a spade considering he flatted a raise preflop. So he, he doesn't have, he shouldn't have too many like King Jack with the spade hands. He usually would have, you know, King Queen with the Queen of Spades maybe. Um, obviously on this run out, it's great, great river card for me. I go all in. He, based on the quick call, I assume he had a flush, maybe pocket fives. Check in a moment.
he had king queen of spades. Um, so betting the turn is not the greatest because, like I said, his range for calling the flop, you know, he's not going to have tons of like one pair of hands that just think I'm bluffing and call again. But the reason I bet the turn is I think I can still represent a wider range if I bet the turn. If I if I check the turn, I think it really looks a lot like what I have, like a value hand that's scared of the spade. If I bet the turn, though, I still keep in, in my range, all of the bluffs. Because if I did check raise the flop as a bluff, with say seven, nine and diamonds or six, seven or something like that, um, I'd pretty much always keep betting that turn. So I'm, I want to be conscious of what my opponents would perceive my action would be if I did have something like that. And I think for the most part, they eliminate those 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 flop, those flop check raise bluffs for my range if I if I uh, check the turn. And so that's why I bet the turn. And of course, you know, I have a set, so even though I get called by flush a decent amount, uh, I still have reasonable equity. Um, I wouldn't bet necessarily with a, a, anything much worse than that. So I three bet ace king suited in the bottom right. Obviously, betting this flop is a no-brainer every single time. Um, oh, fuck. my time bank was going, and I was definitely going to play that queen nine suited. Um, so I got check raised here. I'm just going to stick it in. Uh, I do think that the times when he's... Mm, maybe I should just call there, especially with the ace-king of hearts, with the two hearts in my hand. Um, mm, I don't know. Maybe I should call with the ace-king with like the ace or the king of diamonds and raise with non-diamond protected ace-kings if I want to have a mixed strategy with ace-king. Where I sometimes raise ace kings and sometimes don't raise ace kings. Um, I was just a little bit afraid that if I don't jam with ace king there, it looks too much like the only hands I have when I jam are a bluff. Not that that matters because it's not like he's value raising and then deciding. So that actually is, is pretty much a moot point. Um, I think. I mean, maybe I'm just being results oriented. He folded. Um, but it is it is pretty important to raise against his bluffs. I mean, not against his bluffs, against his semi bluffs. Uh, I don't exactly want to let him see a turn card with a, with a flush draw for for cheap. Uh, so I have three bet ace king of spades in the top right. I'm pretty much always check folding this flop with my hand. Uh, and you know, obviously, because I'm doing that, I, I do think that it's important against smart players, at least to sometimes check strong hands on this flop texture because it just looks like I'm check folding a lot. I get one of the better possible turn cards for my hand. It gives me a gut shot and it just gives me a little bit more fold equity. You know, for example, if he had pocket sevens or something like that and he took a free card in the flop, he might now fold on a queen. Whereas if I had bet the flop, he might have just called. Uh, against some good players, I might go for a bet here. Um, but this like random guy who I've never seen before with a very odd stack size, um, who has, you know, he's playing 17-0 so far, which is like, you know, through 12 hands doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, but I'm just not going to go for a bluff here. I'm a little bit afraid that he just thinks I can't have anything because I check the flop, which is not the worst read ever. I'm going to fold my king-queen. Definitely a spot where I've called four bet king-queen a lot. Um, but it is basically the worst position for a cold four bet. Um, you know, under the gun, under the gun plus one, their range is going to be that much tighter. 
that said, you know, they also still will fold, they'll then fold some stronger hands, you know, under the gun will fold like pocket nines and stuff, whereas if it was button versus small blind versus big blind, he might just jam. Uh, part of it was that the three better did not have that many three bets in that, in that situation, so I gave him a little bit more credit, maybe more than he do. I three bet the queens against this gentleman from Greece and he pulls. I'm going to three bet the nines against this guy. Kind of want just to get a nice percentage of the stack in. Uh, I have a vulnerable but still very strong pocket pair. Uh, I fold the 7-8 there in the bottom right, very close spot. Um, he's pretty much representing, you know, a 3, which he doesn't have too often, so I'm a little bit skeptical that he would try to bluff representing a super strong hand there. Um, for the most part, if my opponent is not representing very much, I tend to call down a lot. Uh, but in certain spots, I think it against competent opponents, I might give them a little bit more credit in that spot because I don't think that... It, they would be very likely to try to represent a, a strong hand when there weren't very many strong hands possible. Uh, button is on the nittier side, so I'm opening ace 10, and the other reason is that a friend from Greece is to my left, so just give myself an opportunity to play a pot with him. Uh, not a terrible flop for c betting in a lot of situations, but four way. I'm just not going to c bet. He's 10 high here. I would c bet if I had, you know, 6 7 suited or maybe the 7 9 of club or something like that. Um, and where I am that much more likely to turn a decent amount of equity, but not with this hand. I'm going to 3 bet in this spot against Raise and Confused. This is. I mean, I don't have a huge read on him, but he seems like a pretty good regular from the hands I've played with him. He hasn't done anything really to stick out uh, against me, but I think putting some pressure here in position is pretty reasonable with the play with, given the players behind. I could fuck with him and just three bet him again in this table, but you know what? Why, why am I saying like that? Like I'm doing shit. I bet again. I really have to turn Table Ninja on. I have Table Ninja and it keeps crashing though every time I've turned it on, especially crashes when I have a video going, so that's why I haven't been using it. I said I I was kind of half joking that I was going to 3 bet him just to fuck with him because I was 3 betting him on the other table, but in reality, I mean, three rating ace seven suited there is just clearly the correct play. I'm probably calling every time with ace ten suited, uh, maybe ace nine suited too. So three betting something like ace seven suited and ace eight suited is obviously going to work out pretty well in terms of a three betting strategy against against a good opponent from under the gun. So we got about twelve more minutes left on this video, and then I'm going to probably record another one because I'm going to. Barcelona, and I won't be able to record for the next couple weeks. Top right. Yeah, I don't think four betting is exactly the worst play in the world in my hand, but I like having like slightly bigger cards for it, um, since people do call four bets nowadays. I'm going to 4-bet King-6 suited, though, significantly better hand, better spot for a 4-bet um, with this hand. I wouldn't be too opposed to calling a pretty with King-6 suited, though it seems a little bit too weak. Um, but it's very hard for me to criticize a strategy that has tons and tons of calling uh, preflop in position.
man. I don't know how I can fold getting four and a half to one, but I'm gonna fold. That might have been a bad play. I, I mm. basically, if somebody shows me that they can four bet bluff in that spot with like not four bet but five bet bluff in that spot, or not even bluff, but like I mean, you know, if he has ace king, folding king six suited could potentially be wrong. If you know, if let's say I, well, I mean, I'm probably not getting obviously I'm not getting away on a king, but I'm, um, I am frequently stacking him if I just hit a six. Um, Obviously, I had a six when we both hit a king. Um, I'm going to three bet top left, uh, mainly because we're deep. I can see myself folding this sometimes in a normal situation, uh, but we're deep, so uh, my positional advantage becomes that much better, and I want to ensure that I'm in position against him, possibly heads up, uh, given this big positions. Uh, I don't want to let players in behind necessarily. I mean, I'm going to call here. I think his format size is really just too small for our stack depth. If we're 500 deep, it's fine. 1,000 deep. The main reason it's not good against me is because I'm never 3-betting with like total junk. It's not like I have ace-8 off here. Um, so it's not like I have stuff that can really fold. I'm only 3-betting with like pretty good stuff. So I'm still, you know, I'm going to have like, like 7 nice 2 is probably one of the worst hands I can have here. Uh, obviously, in this flop, nothing I can do. I'm just going to fold. Uh, though certainly if I hit any piece on that flop, I'm not really folding with position and the ability to possibly move a pot later, the ability to uh, just outplay him on later streets with position. Bottom right, not a spot I'd see bet a ton of hands against this player, but Jack-9, I'm always see betting on that board. I'm going to cold four bet. With this hand, I'm making it a little bit bigger than normal because I'm out of position and there's already an opener, so there's a little bit more money in the pot. I meant to make it 15 at the bottom right, doesn't I don't know why I click it off when I have to preset numbers. But. So I decided not to see bet in the top left, my ace three off. Not a whole ton of cards I'd be happy barreling on. This is obviously one of the few cards I might continue barreling on. Um, since I think he just folds a lot of his one pair of hands and at least I have a gut shot. Um, a five, you know, obviously five might be better, but uh, I can't do anything now, obviously, so to fold. I'm gonna call the bottom right my knight and suited uh, to a min raise. It's a hand that could three bet, but it, Part of the reason I don't three bet is that it's not that bad if I get a multi-way pot. Even if somebody calls behind me in position, it's not the greatest situation. I usually would prefer to just get it all, I mean, to get it heads up uh, and have position for the hand, but it's not the end of the world. I'm opening threes under the gun. Uh, I think there's an okay table for it. Um, we talked about this in the last video. I got a little bit 
some criticism. I think some people thought I should be opening all pairs under the gun. It doesn't seem imperative, though. I've yet to be convinced why. If, as I suspect on many people's databases, they're losing this hand from under the gun. This pool is moving really slow right now. There's only 29 entries uh, and probably 12, 12 players total. Um, I'm probably for my next video should hop down to one, two to get a little bit more action. The three bet the king five suited. I mean, I probably folded more than I three bet in this spot, but. Not the worst play in the world. Three bet versus a button open. Uh, three. I'm, I checked on the bottom right. I don't think it's a hand that I can necessarily get three streets of value on, uh, but I'd be happy to call three streets of bluffing on. Um, now this is, you know, to contrast from that hand earlier on where I folded the king jack. Uh, this is a spot where, you know, going call, call, fold with a queen and call, call, call with a king can make some sense against certain opponents. Um, because if I go check, 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 and he has something like king, jack, I'd expect him to always uh, go for three streets of value. Uh, so me having a king in my hand, it blocks that. It makes it that much more likely that he's bluffing. Um, and because of that, I think having a king makes it, it makes it that much more important to check call down with a king rather than check call down with a queen. Uh, and by contrast, that hand earlier that we talked about where I threw bet and check called with king jack on, on king queen 10, 10, whatever. Um, that's the type of spot where it's not like I expect him to have that many worse kings. So me having a king in my hand doesn't uh, make him that much more bluff heavy. Uh, in fact, I'm blocking basically the same hands if I have a queen versus if I have a king. Because probably the only hands uh, that he goes for three streets of value there with are king queen plus. <laughs> Uh, top right, I'm calling not three bet with ten jack of hearts. A little bit too good of a hand to three bet and risk getting four bet, but it's not good enough that I can, you know, play a four bet pot happily with it. I'm gonna go for a check raise on this flop. With all my, you know, nine ten, ten jack, jack nine hands here, I mix it up between calling and raising, and. I'm representing a fair amount of value hands, pretty much all combos of anything better than one pair I can have. So I tend to check raise with my gut shots and stuff a little bit more on those sort of board textures because I can represent uh, basically all the strong hands that much more credibly. Uh, and I'm gonna continue bluffing on this board. Uh, even though I made second pair, it's not valuable enough. Um, I kind of like keeping his range a little bit wider by keeping and make my turn bed a little bit smaller and then betting big on the river like pot or all in for a little bit more than pot here. I think having a jack makes my bluff a little bit better um, because it just knocks out that one extra combo of or those extra combos of ace jack that he could have. So it knocks out a little bit more combos of him having an unfoldable hand. You know, his unfoldable hands in this spot are basically, now I'm not saying necessarily whether he should or he won't, or he, or he would fold or he shouldn't fold. I'm more saying what I'd expect him never to fold would be something like a seven plus. I expect him never to fold those hands. But then again, I also expect him to sometimes raise on the flop with some of those. So I discount some of those those big flop hands uh, somewhat. Um, so because of that, having a jack in my hand makes my bluff a little bit better. I'm not saying I wouldn't have bluffed it if I had, uh, I don't know, six nine or something. Not that I really call pre flop six nine, but just for sake of argument, I probably still would bluff, but I just think having a jack in my hand makes it that much better. 
Uh, obviously having a 10 in my hand also is good. Cuts out on another one of his unfoldable hands, that being 9-10. Um, having a club in my hand wouldn't hurt either, but that probably doesn't reduce as many combos as having a jack does. Uh, So after this ace king hand, we're gonna call it quits for this video, and we'll begin recording the next one. So I three bet the ace king in this spot. Real no brainer. You know this is just. One of those spots is just gonna, I made a way too big of a bet on the flop here. This is just really dumb. I don't know why I did I was just about to talk about this. It's such a standard spot. You should basically play this every time perfectly and not worry too much about how to play this, but I still managed to screw it up. I really should just bet small on this flop in this spot against this player. I sort of was thinking about, you know, just a normal three bet pot when the stacks are deeper. I want to set it up for a river uh, jam, but I don't need to do that in this spot. It's just, there's so much money in the pot in ratio to our stack. I can just bet really small and he'll call. But then again, when I bet big and he calls, there's more money in the pot. So it worked out in that spot. But I think betting like 50 on the flop there is much better. Anyway, so one quick thing about that bluff on the top right. I sort of mumbled about how I want to bet a little bit smaller on the turn and I keep his range a little bit wider for the river. Uh, I think. That's a spot where I don't mind betting a little bit smaller overall my range, keeping his a lot of his hands in uh, and then jamming the river, uh, at least with bluff, certainly with value hands that could make some sense too, just to keep some of his, his hands that are drawing dead in uh, if I have like a flush or something like that. Um, in that spot, I think it worked to my advantage because I think it makes him just that more likely to never fold something like ace x with a club, whereas if I bomb the turn, maybe he folds some of those hands. Um, and obviously I want those hands in his range because I think he'll fold those on the river most of the time. Uh, anyway, okay, so that's it. Um, I'm gonna play until my big blinds. And as always, uh, just let me know what you guys thought of the video and questions or comments. I think there was some good content in this video. Uh, I'm really unsure about that King Jack hand from the beginning of the session. I could go either way of it. I'd say I called there more than half the time, but I just folded this time. Mm -hmm. Might have been right. I mean, I don't think people bluff there a whole ton, but I just hate the idea that I'm folding 100% in that spot because that's kind of what I'm saying by folding King Queen there or King Jack. Um, the 10 Jack bluff, I think, once I take the flop line, becomes mandatory. Uh, I think he has enough Ace X with a club in his hand that I can't ever check fold the turn. I think I always have to go for the bluff on the turn. I'm sorry, on the river. Uh, I'm trying to think through any other controversial hands. Um, there was that eights that I check raise and then bet the turn. Again, I don't have to bet that turn, but I thought more consistent in my range. And it, it keeps more bluffs in my range if I bet the turn rather than checking it. I three bet with seven eight suited. In general, I'm not gonna uh, C bet this flop with like no equity too often, or with just like an eight high when it's somebody cold calls a three bet. But I do have a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, I, mid position. I can win the pot later. I'm gonna and I, I, I'm gonna bet this card. You know, I I usually talk about how I like you know semi bluffing so much more than just naked bluffing in all these spots. But this is a spot where I think it's a mandatory bluff with my hand on this board texture. He just has so many pocket pairs. So I think it's fine to be bluffing 100% of your bluffing range there. Okay, uh, I guess that's it. Nope, one more. All right, well, all right, questions, comments. As always, DonnieStern, DeucesCrack.com. I will see you guys next week.